Hey folks, comrades here, and uh, I thought I'd look at the worldview imagery again for the summer of 2017. Uh, today is July 13th, so um, this, is, this is our third look at the worldview imagery this summer. It's been about two weeks since last time. Um, meant to do a video earlier, but it's hard to find a day that had, uh, you know, had uh, clear skies and not too much cloud cover of the areas that I wanted to look at. And I uh, wanted, finally wanted to do a video today because I've noticed more melting momentum really gathering steam that's really become obvious as of the last couple of days, especially in the East Siberian Sea here, uh, where it's really, 2017 has really pulled ahead of other years. So I want to talk about that, but first let's start uh, Let's go clockwise as usual, starting with the Beaufort. And uh, here's one area where 2017 is admittedly quite a bit behind 2016. 2016 had this big, uh, you know, gaping hole in the Beaufort that uh, had opened up at this point. And there's the big block right there, which. Um, you know, 2017, by contrast, you see, it's actually, there's fewer little bergy bits along the coastline of 2017, uh, but this part of the pack is much more, much more solid. So, I think, on the whole, this, this puts 2017 a little bit behind 2016 in the Beaufort. Um, you know, 2017 is having a decent year of melt in the Beaufort. You can see this part of the Northwest Passage is just about open. Here's just barely, you know, some little bits of melting ice running right here, but, uh, you know, admittedly 2016 was ahead in this region. However, if you go up here, you see quite a bit of a difference once you get up into the Chukchi. All right, and the thing I noticed today is, well, first of all, you see, you know, there are some open leads the, the size of each flow is very small. This is all very pulverized, very low quality ice. There's a bunch of little leads opening up. Uh, you know, dispersion is uh, increasing. Uh, but what really caught my eyes, there's, it's kind of hard to see, but if you look, there's kind of a, I'm going to try to outline it for you with my mouse. Right around here, you know, below this part, see how it's kind of brighter white right here, and then it gets kind of like a gray right here. Like right along here, you see that transition, and then coming down this side, there's kind of that gray. All right, that that to me is a sign of imminent melt. All right, and one reason I say that, actually, you can kind of see some more of it. Um, let's zoom in a little. See see that dividing line right there? Yeah, that gray is is uh, going to melt any day now. And the reason I say that is because I saw a similar thing over here in the Car Sea recently. See where this big pocket is right now, this big hole? Well, a couple days ago, that looked like our kind of like a area of relative uh, gray. If you look like right about here, I started to notice it. See? We go back to about here. Looks all about the same, really. Um, it'd be hard to tell if there's going to be a pocket forming here, but watch closely around here. You'll see the ice start to really thin out and turn gray. Okay, first, uh, hard, still hard to tell any difference. Okay, now you're starting to see kind of a gray swath right here. Definitely very pronounced on the 7th, on the 8th, very pronounced on the 9th. 10th is kind of obscured by clouds, but yeah, boom, look at that. 11th, bam. <laughs> so once ice starts to get that kind of almost translucent uh, look, which, by the way, might partly because, be because the ice is thinning so much at that point that you're actually seeing some of the ocean 
you know, some of the light is passing through the ice all the way to the ocean underneath. I don't think this is uh, soot or anything landing on top of the ice at this point. Um, you know, this is kind of what the soot looks like. This is relatively thicker ice over here that has some dust or soot or something on it. You can kind of tell it's more of a more of a yellowish gray color, whereas this is more of a bluish gray. So you can see there's a there's kind of a dividing line here now. So all this ice right here is going to be following this ice in a in a day or two completely disintegrating. Yeah, I imagine this kind of this this line of kind of bluish gray translucent ice will be marching along the car as this disintegrating. All this over here is this you know, is already very bluish gray. Everything up to kind of this area where the ice has kind of been compacted and shielded from the from the warmer waters. Which, by the way, even though the car C got a late start to its uh, breakup, it's had a lot of sunshine. It's had a very sunny July so far, and it has soaked up a lot of heat. This water is already way above normal temperature uh, so it's making up for lost time I would say and so once you see that kind of grayish look to the ice it's only a couple days before you get you get that and then it's only a couple more days when you go from that to open ocean I can tell you that because we just saw the same thing here in the East Siberian Sea All right along the coast here especially if we go back look at the dramatic melt over the past week some of these days are pretty cloudy but look here a week ago this looked like pretty solid ice you know right along the coast St it still looked like fast ice uh that was totally still attached to the the coast but and it, but you see that grayish look now some of this i think is soot and dirt but some of it might be also the ice becoming a bit translucent and thin enough to start seeing the ocean underneath for that to show through on the satellite imagery. So by here, it's really getting translucent and starting to break up. Definitely breaking up. And it's practically, you see there's little wisps of uh, ice that quickly, <laughs> you see they're kind of strung together one day and then the next day, there are isolated little bits that are going to be gone by tomorrow, you know. So uh, this, you know, in a, in a couple days, a large swath of the Kara Sea is going to look like this. And then uh, give it about another week, and it's going to be open ocean. Uh, so this has really been dramatic here in the East Siberian Sea. And I can't think of a year that has had such a dramatic melt from the Chukchi over all the way to the Laptev, the whole kind of Eastern Russian sector. This is even 2014. 2014 had a strong Laptev bite. If we look, let's go back to 2014, this date. See, it had a strong Laptev bite, but look at here at the East Siberian Sea. It was completely socked in completely closed up. Chukchi wasn't very far advanced. All right, this part was still still a lot of ice over here, still very solid. All right, let's go back to see 2015. Still a lot of ice in the East Siberian Sea, almost no laptop bio whatsoever. Uh, 2016 once again, great melt in the Beaufort, but comparatively, now we might have to go forward a day here to get a day without so many clouds. But even by the 15th, you see there's still a lot of ice in the East Siberian Sea. Let's go back a few days, see if we find a good... A lot of cloudiness. 2016, let's go forward. Okay, that's a decent-ish day, but yeah, still a lot of ice here. In between Wrangel Island and the East Siberian Sea. 
and not much of a lap tev bite you know still very solid ice here in the lap tev you know yes the car c had melted out totally but look at the solidity of this ice all right this is three days later in 2016 whereas we go to 2017 this is already breaking up uh, and then there, this ice is much more broken up um, big lap to bite and then the sea siberian sea over into the chukchi if we go back to 2016 we see that it's much less far farther advanced here's a day we can kind of see this is cloud right here so you, you gotta ignore that but see where the line is it's kind of right about here kind of you draw a straight line from Wrangell Island to Barrow it's just a little bit to the right of that line in 2016 whereas 2017 it's significantly there's a lot of blue ocean to the right of that line and all this stuff is much more looks much more low, lower quality here in the vicinity of uh, Wrangell Island and you know the lap tab I would almost wager looks worse. It's been hard to get a good look at that lately, but okay, here's it. Okay, so Laptev actually is a bit more solid, although this looks like it has about a week. Remember how this looked over here a week ago? <laughs> so, some of this stuff that's still fast ice. I'd give it about a week before it is basically completely gone. Um, and this may be just a little bit more, but by the end of July, this is going to be gone too. Uh, so I'd say 27 is is racing ahead in the Russian sector of the Arctic. Uh, it's just a little bit behind in the Beaufort, at least in terms of extent. Now we still. I've looked at the the depth buoys and looks like a lot of this ice is less than one meter thick, which is absurd, which means we can wave bye-bye to it this summer if that's really the case. 2016, see it's a lot more dispersed, but there were some big blocks of multi-year ice, like this big block here that lingered all the way into, we can probably pick a random date in August. And, and uh, find it still there in 2016. Uh, we can find a day without a bunch of clouds. So 2016 didn't have an ideal melting season. Okay, so I guess this is remnants of the big block right here, I'm guessing. Or did it drift up farther? In any case, um, you know, it was hard work to melt out a lot of this stuff in 2016 because a lot of it was two meter thick, multi year ice. Whereas if, uh, let's jump back here, 2017, you know, a month from now, what is this going to look like? Uh, I don't know, especially th this part, two weeks from now, is going to look rough. I can tell you that. There's going to be a big, big hole in it right about here where it's very dispersed and uh, a similar thing over on this side to a certain extent you might think well uh, 2017 is also lagging 2016 over here look at that for 2016 all right but here's the thing with the uh, the Atlantic sector of the Arctic sea ice there's of course, we all know there's a lot of warm, relatively warm water sent up by the Gulf Stream to go melt this ice. What might not be so obvious is if you look at uh, bathymetric maps, maps of the depth of the ocean floor, there's a, a continental shelf drop off right about here. And you can pretty much guarantee that any ice to the south of this, where this where the bathymetry basically drops off into the deep central Arctic basin, all the ice is going to melt off because all this warm water stays kind of near the surface until it gets to that cliff. And then it tends to drop off and um, 
you know, that's why a lot of times you won't see this even in the best of year, the best melting years, you won't see the line of ice progress much past about this line because there's that cliff where beyond that the warm water drops off down into the down into the basin it doesn't stay near the surface where it can melt the ice so um, so I think you know 27 is going to equal 2017 is going to equalize pretty easily there by the end of the of the melt season and it might even go a little bit beyond that because just if you look at how dispersed there was a bit of that in 2016 uh, but it looks I don't know it's hard to say there but all in all well actually before we leave let's look real quick at the Northwest Passage uh, I think it's comparable to other years this melted out a bit sooner than in 2016 see there's a little bit left there in 2016 on this day whereas this on this day on 2017 all this is almost totally melted out even all the way over here there's uh, this is this is going pretty quickly um, so the southern part of the Northwest Passage melting a little bit faster in 2017 uh, the main channel maybe a little bit behind it's hard to see what kind of cracks there are what kind of breakup because the past few days have been cloudy but I know there are some cracks Let's see. Yeah, you can see some cracks. There's a crack there, crack there. If I go back one more day, let's see. No, that's probably the best day here. But yeah, see there are some cracks. Most obviously that one. There's one over here, or that might be a cloud shadow actually. But um, in contrast, 2016, yeah, 2016 was a little bit ahead here. Quite a few more cracks, at least in this upper part of the of the main channel. Even as the southern route was a little bit behind, so. Um, yeah, so I think the Northwest Passage is going to be about the same for both years. So the real question, you know, if whether 2017 will beat out 2016 depends on how the, you know, the Russian sector compares with the Beaufort. You know, if 2017 can compensate for its slightly weaker Beaufort melting with uh, more aggressive Russian sector melting up here. And uh, I think it will. I think 20, 2017 will end up second place, slightly below 2016, not quite as low as 2012, if I had to guess. Um, I'm going to stick to that prediction. I think that's how it's panning out. Uh, but uh, we will see. We'll see what the effect of uh, this reduced sea ice thickness this year will be. So stay tuned uh, as we watch this. As we continue to watch for the rest of the summer and see what happens. See you next time.